We're trying this again. <sighs> can you hear us? Uh, somebody tell us if you can hear us now. We signed yeah. out the old thing and we're trying over again. So, well, someone can tell us if they can hear us now. Hopefully they can. Um, anybody out there? Anybody out there? Hello. There you are. Uh, okay, Jackie's watching. So someone, Dawn's watching. Somebody so tell us tell if us, you can hear us can you hear before us? we go any further and start talking again. <laughs> can you hear us now? Can somebody hear us? Hello. I can hear you. Yay. yay. Cassandra, yay. Thank you. <laughs> okay. It hurts to be us sometimes. I know. So to start over again, what I was telling you. <laughs> you know, the, the, you thought this was a church service. Instead, it's a comedic act, I think, yeah. some days. Yeah, okay. Uh, anyway, the comet. Comet. Last time for 6,800 years. So try this if you haven't been able to find it yet. Go out tonight about 11 o'clock earlier later whatever look up in the northwest sky okay so either go look at north and then go er, and that's the west well it is from here anyway but look in the northwest <laughs> sky and just kind of look up a little bit don't look all the way up just look up a little bit which is about 40 degrees and the big dipper sitting right there hey and if you don't know you can download an app called skyview oh. and hold it up and it'll show you what constellation you're looking at that's true skyview is kind of cool so anyway, Big Dipper sitting there with the handle up and the, the cup down. So at the bottom end of the cup, down from there, and about 20 degrees up off of the horizon is where the comet is, at least at that time of night. So go ahead and try that and go from there. Mike Lilga has been getting some really nice pictures. Yeah, yeah. Okay. All right. Let's go. Gee. Uh, nothing great was ever achieved without enthusiasm. I believe that. Yay! I, I just painted that. my van this morning, or at least the whole front end. I've been up since about 5.30, I guess, painting. <sighs> Fun. I'm not going to pay the money that they want for body work and paint. Oh, my gosh. Oh, no, that's okay, all right, care. all right, all right. <laughs> uh, life without love is like a tree without blossom and fruit. Hmm. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. And oft a little rain, morning rain foretells a pleasant day. Take oh. that to heart. Red sky at night, sailors, sailors delight. delight. Red sky in morning, morning. Sailors, sailors take, take warning. warning. Yep. yep. My dad was in the navy. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. A bachelor's life is a is a splendid breakfast, a tolerably flat dinner, and a most miserable supper. Hmm. Depends on the bachelor. I know. Well, no one is too small to be able to help a friend. Oh, that nice. is true to that. Nice. While he's doing the next thing, if um, if you're not on my email list, uh, I send out a weekly email that has links to last week's messages on YouTube. So if you'd like to get that, please send me your email address and send it to Janice at JaniceLynch.com. And all that that email does is just give you the information about <clears throat> upcoming things that are happening, which is not much right now and connections to YouTube uh, previous messages. So. There's all kinds of things happening. Three minutes before we were supposed to go on the air, Jan couldn't make anything work, and my and I spilled my coffee in the other room. Oh, yeah. Mm. So I got to clean that up. Oh, yeah, so fun. <laughs> Jeez. Okay, things that make you go, hmm. Mm, Phil, you make me go, hmm, all the time. I know, I know. Um, we are linked by blood, and blood is memory without language. Ooh. Isn't that cool? Hmm. Yeah, choice oats. Smart lady. She sewed her oats, did she? I don't know. I'm not going to go there. Mm. A ship in harbor is safe, but that is not what ships are for. Oh, there is truth to that. Not Be sure. on your guard against the silent dog and still water. The Latin proverb. Say that again. Be on your guard against a silent dog and still water. In other words, stuff's going to happen. Mm -hmm. I mean, it is. It's just going to. So, so, so you keep, you keep, somebody keeps freezing up. I, I can't. I don't know that it's I don't us. know we can do that. Can't do that. Never mistake knowledge for wisdom. One helps you make a living. The other helps you make a life. Ooh. Nice. Remember that. A wise person would. Uh, the tombstone of Mel Blanc 
The famed voice of cartoon characters Bugs Bunny, Sylvester the Cat, Tweety the Bird, and Porky Pig reads, That's, That's all, all, folks. Yep. All right. At least it doesn't say bleh, 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 that's all, folks. That's true. I don't mess around how you spell blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. uh, we do have a couple of patron saints by the name of John Lennon and George Carlin. Okay. John said, a dream you dream alone is only a dream. A dream you dream together is reality. Mm. And George, equally as insightful. Can't wait to hear this one. Actually, this thing has a lot to do with what's going on right now. Oh, I mm. think. I think. And he's not even around to see it. I know. Just when I discovered the meaning of life, they changed it. Uh, there might be some truth to that. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right. Things that happened in the 1500s. Um, for those I don't remember what happened yesterday. I know. This might be a little squeak, squeak, queasy for some people. Queasy. Queasy. Okay. And queasy, queasy. asties. Oh, oh bad. Sorry. Sorry. I feel bad. England is old and small. Uh, this is the 1500s. And local folks started running out of places to bury people. So they would dig up coffins and would take the bones to a bone house and reuse the grave. When reopening these coffins, one out of 25 coffins were found to have scratch marks on the inside. So uh, yeah, I'm not even going to say what, what, what they thought, but yeah, obviously they did something wrong. So they would tie a string on the wrist of the corpse, lead it through the coffin and up through the ground and tie it to a bell. Someone would sit um, by the grave all night, the graveyard shift, mm -hmm. uh, to listen for the bell. Thus, someone could be saved, saved by the bell, or considered a dead ringer. Hmm. Interesting, huh? That's where they came from. Now you know. Um, I used to eat a lot of natural foods until I learned that most people die of natural causes. There's more, but since we're... we speaking of natural foods, we were given some fresh lettuce oh, and some kale. I used to not like kale. This kale this didn't kale have was a, it was great. didn't have that bitter taste to it. Yeah, um, it was wonderful. Tomatoes. Oh, we feasted. We feasted did. On and another, na another neighbors gave us some um, uh, uh, eggplant. No, that was them. No. Did they, no, they gave us eggplant? Mm -hmm. Oh, well, they did give us eggplant. So. Yum. Yeah. So we've been feasting on we have. things, so we will die of natural causes, too, I hope. <laughs> There's worse things to die of than natural causes. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Sorry. Little girl on a plane. Yes, I've done this one before because this was given to me in 2009, September of 2009. So, but I know I've done it at least another time. So, anyway. A stranger was seated next to a little girl on an airplane when the stranger turned to her and said, Let's talk. I've heard that planes, that flights go quicker if you strike up a conversation with your fellow passenger. The little girl who had just opened her book closed it slowly and said to the stranger, would, what would you like to talk about? Oh, I don't know, said the stranger. How about nuclear power? He smiles. This was back in 09, so anyway. Okay, she said, um, that could be an interesting topic, um, but let me ask you a question first. A horse, a cow, and a deer all eat the same stuff, grass. Yet a deer secretes little pellets while a cow turns out a, a flat patty. And a horse, uh, well, it's flat after it hits the ground anyway. And a horse produces clumps of dried grass. Um, why do you suppose that is? The stranger, visibly surprised by the little girl's intelligence, thinks about it and says, hmm, I have no idea. To which the little girl replies, well, do you really feel qualified to discuss nuclear power when you don't know doo-doo? Substitute another word if you'd like. Good question. Uh -huh. All right. Hey, you know what? You're on. <sighs> I, After that. I kind of like Facebook. I don't have any shoes on. It's awesome. It's just awesome. Well, you know, there are people in services. Daryl used to come to church all the time and then take his shoes off. Oh, I know. Off. Yeah. Well, we, we would encourage things like that, but I just never did it in church. So just because. But, but now you can. But now I can. And it is so nice. Bye. Bye, Phil. Bye. I'm going to adjust this just a little bit this way. Hope everybody's doing really well. Uh, I have some interesting things I want to chat with you about today. Um, before 
I do before you get involved into that. Uh, things I'm going to say today may challenge you. And just notice that. Notice if you get challenged and you think you need to have an opinion, it's okay. And you can have that opinion. Just be with it. Whatever your experience of what I say today, just be with it and notice it. All right? I'm going to tell you about what happened to us this week. Our sweet little Lila, we were taking her for a walk out on Bateman Island. <clears throat> Here in the Tri-Cities, it's this island has a causeway or a, a walkway uh, that is land. And so you cross, cross over that onto this island. And the causeway is man-made. Anyway, we were out walking, had a really good walk, long walk, getting warm, came back, and there's a little area where uh, the water comes up to the side and there's a nice little beach. So she was off her leash and she was running in the water, chasing sticks and learning to swim. She was doing pretty good at the swimming. <clears throat> and then all of a sudden, a herd of people started coming by and uh, they were speaking a different language and they had, uh, the gentleman in the front had uh, a wagon that they were pulling that had all their supplies, their fishing supplies and food and all that stuff. And it was making a ton of noise. And then people behind, different age group of people, and they were trundling along behind talking and the kids were squealing, blah, blah, blah. Well, Delilah got freaked out. And she ran in front of them, barked at them. And it didn't matter how hard I called her name or whistled. Normally she comes when she's called. And then she comes when she's whistled for. But she just kept staying in front of them. And then they were trudging along pretty quickly. And I couldn't catch up with them. So Phil took out after them. And she kept staying ahead of them. And he couldn't catch up to them. And so when he finally caught up to them, she had gone on in a different way than we had ever gone before. And I stayed back at the lagoon area, the little beach area, because in case she came back. There's only one way on the, she would have had to go that way if she was, if she was running back. So while he was gone, I was quite distressed. And so I took a moment and prayed. That's what we do, right? <laughs> we try to remember to do that. Oftentimes we don't remember, but this time I remembered to pray. And in that moment of prayer, I found a deep resonance of peace. And I knew two truths. One truth was she couldn't get off the island without going past me. And the second truth was I wasn't leaving without her. And with those two truths, then I became very calm. Everything else was just stuff. Everything else was just the way that was going to play itself out. And I didn't have to know. I didn't have to be in control. I didn't have to be in charge of any of that. So quite a while lasted, and I thought, oh, this is, she, you know, it's not a small island, but it's pretty good size, and she's off somewhere. And uh, a gentleman was, a jogger came running past, and I saw him coming up the walkway, so I stepped off the pathway just to let him go. And as he passed, I stepped back onto the pathway, and here was the Delilah following him. And she had a blank look in her eye. She was gone. She had lost it. She had lost the consciousness. That was Delilah. She was just dog in survival mode. And when I stepped onto the trail, she kind of hesitated. And I called her name. She perked up, looked at me, came back alive, came that awareness, popped back in. And she came running to me with that recognition and she I got, got grabbed her by the uh, collar and off we walked and we had to go find Phil because I didn't bring my phone I had gotten a message to take my phone and I thought well no I don't want to be disturbed on our walk uh, I'll just leave it here I, you know you think I'd learn to follow directions because when they come they're usually right <laughs> so anyway some guy was walking a fisherman was walking this other way and I said, do you happen to have a phone on you? And would you mind calling my husband's phone? And he said, oh, yeah, I just saw him. He asked me if he'd seen your own. And I, 
so he dialed the number, put it on speakerphone. I said, Bill, I found the dog. And he said, okay, I'm on my way back. And we met up and we walked all the way back. So it was a double walk pretty much for, for both of us, all of us. Apparently, uh, where we normally stop and let Lila play in the water was where the fisher people, all with all the noise and the people and all that, they had gone off there. And she had just kept going. She was just lost her mind. And the other guy had been running and she found him and followed him back to the, the entrance towards where, where I was. So why am I telling you this? I'm telling you this because we do that. We get all caught up in the clutter and the sound and the noise and the hubbub and we can't hear spirit calling us. The one that loves us the most calls to us all the time, wants us to be with them all the time. And we miss it because we're so caught up in having to, having to direct the people or this event that's happening we have no control over. But we gotta tell them that we don't like that and we gotta bark at it. And we gotta, gotta get in there and tell them they're wrong or try to make them understand that this is my trail, not your path. Um, and they're just doing what they came here to do. We forget that. People who are on the other political party, they're just doing what they came here to do. None of their business. My business is to vote, vote my heart and let everything else be what it is. I don't have to tell them they're wrong. I don't have to get upset about what they're doing. I can allow it to be. Reminds me of another time I had a, um, my son when he was young had a black lab. Black lab's name was Bo. And in Bakersfield, we were, I would walk him around the block. Well, I had been studying my Bible and I had been looking. I know I did that. It was weird. I'm just one of those weird people. I think the Bible's a really cool thing. So I was reading that passage and I didn't understand it. And so I thought, well, I'll just take the dog for a walk. So I took the dog for a walk, walked around a few blocks, and the whole way this dog is either sniffing that bush or trying to cross the street or walking behind me. Or, and finally, about halfway, to, about half the block to home, or almost home, I said, I just want you to walk with me. And I looked down at the dog, and the dog looked up at me. And in that moment, I heard, I heard, had a ping on the back of my head, and I heard the male voice say, I just want you to walk with me. Ah, oh, so all that struggling of trying to figure out what that verse meant and how could I, what is that supposed to do? I could just let it go. I could figure that out down the road. It would be revealed down the road. Maybe he wasn't even talking to me. He would have nothing to do with me right now. I could just let it go. All the stress. All the trying to figure it out, all the trying to know what it is. Is this person right? Is that person right? All that figuring out, all that efforting and anguishing. I can just let that go. He just wanted me to walk with him. I've talked to you before about how I often see Jesus and he's standing on the path. I'm off in the field somewhere and he's looking with, and he's got his hand out going, did you forget who you were there for a minute? It's like, yeah, I did. And I'm welcomed right back onto the path. And we just keep going. Spirit, divine source, just wants to connect with us. Just wants us to be connected in. And to be present. And when that happens, then this beautiful connection happens. And our life unfolds with wisdom, with grace, and peace. I want to share a Bible verse with you. I know you saw that coming, didn't you? <laughs> didn't have to be psychic to see that one. <clears throat> this is Luke chapter 19, verse 10. For the Son of Man, yep, 1910. For the Son of Man, and Jesus called himself the Son of Man frequently, and he was talking here. So Jesus is talking about himself. He said, The Son of Man has come to seek and save that which was lost. And that which is lost is our connection. Our innocent connection, our purity of heart, our clarity, we lose that because there's so much stuff going on in the world that we get all caught up in that. 
and, and we, we don't realize that it's separating us from that which loves us the most. Just like Lila got ahead of the, the chaos and had to bark about it and had to, had to get spun up about it. And she separated herself from those that loved her the most. And when she finally recognized, oh, there's the person that loves me. There's my family. There's my home. She was delighted. And I was so delighted to see her. And I think that's how divine source, spirit, higher power, God, Jesus, Holy Spirit, angels, guides, whatever you want to call that, that's how they feel for us. They're not leaving without us. They're not leaving without us. And all roads lead back if we allow ourselves to follow. I'm so grateful for that runner that just happened to be running by and she just happened to be following, get into that mode, and that brought her to an awareness. Sometimes it takes trauma to get us to the point where we, we can be aware enough to wake up and reconnect and be willing to reconnect. And when we do, that feeling is so beautiful. It's blissful. It's full of grace. And we can walk in faith. That's what walking in faith is. We don't have to know the outcome. And we don't have to know why everything is happening the way it is. We don't have to know what to do about everything. Our part will be revealed. And if it's on your heart, you're going to look for it, are you not? You're going to look for your next step. And in that searching, Lila was searching for something. She didn't know what. In that search, I could step out onto the path, and there I was, and we could reconnect. That energy of love is waiting. Waiting for you to just wake up, waiting for you to just look up and notice. And how do you do that? There's lots of ways you can do that. One way is to just notice. Just take a look at something. But I have a couple of, I have a technique I want you to try that I think will really help you. Now, sometimes when I move my hands on the screen, the screen, um, tries to refocus onto my hands rather than my face, so it kind of blurs a little bit. So I apologize if that happens today, but I want you to see this. This is what I call making um, the infinity signal symbol. So you start with a palm up, and you scoop all that stuff that's negative or distressful, and you just put it down. Do the other side. Scoop it up, sweep it over, put it down. This side up over and put it down. And you know what happens when you do that? As you're doing the sweeping motion, you find your body will rock back and forth just a little bit and you become peaceful and you become still and you become connected in with eternity. There's a part of you that is connected with eternity. Ecclesiastes tells us that God has placed eternity in our hearts. Not in our head. Our head can't comprehend it. But in our hearts, in our heart of hearts, there's the essence of eternity. And when we sweep, I hope you're doing this with me, and sweep, this allows us to rebalance ourselves and bring ourselves into that sweet place of harmony and peace and connectedness. How does that feel for you? Now, when you're in that state of being, then you can lock and load and be ready for the next step. So prayerfully, extend two fingers, open your palm so that you're, you have a little triangle there, and then put this in front of your heart. And you're ready to move forward. You've cleared the path, cleared all the clutter, and you're ready to move forward. How does that feel? Can you have a sense of that? I'd like to walk you on a guided meditation now that will help you utilize this technique for clearing and bring you present time when you need to. So are you ready for a little guided meditation? Let's just take a deep breath in. 
and kind of settle, center into your being. All right. <clears throat> now, notice your heart space and notice your mind. And notice that as you are noticing that they can connect on a higher level, your mind can, can do lots of wonderful things. But when we're in that survival mode, that predator-prey mode, am I the victim or I am the, am I the persecutor? Or am I the rescuer? Being in one of those modes doesn't, isn't that higher level of mind that you're seeking. But coming from your heart space, then we can access a higher level of mind. And this higher level of mind is this expanded awareness that we were talking about. In that expanded awareness now, allow yourself to just be here. And notice that divine source is calling your name. It's calling out to you. Maybe you can't hear that verbally, but there is a call, a beckoning, a welcoming. And when we're in our heart of hearts and with that higher awareness, we can hear it. We can respond to that. We can turn towards that. We can be willing to receive that. So in that higher awareness, that connected state of being, we're gonna take a little walk down a country road. Have you ever been down a country road? Often they're just ruts in the ground. And there's dirt and rocks and stuff. And then there's maybe wildflowers on the side, maybe some, uh, maybe a, a fence. Once in a while you come across a, a cattle catcher where there's the grates in the ground and the, and the side fences to keep the cattle from crossing the road or walking past their property. And just keep walking down this, this road and all of a sudden you hear a loud noise, a loud commotion. And allow yourself to step off the side of the road and notice which side of the road are you stepping off onto? Are you stepping off onto the right side? Or are you stepping off onto the left side? Just be aware, it might have spiritual significance for you. It might not, it might. Just notice which side of the road you step off of and where do you stand? Because you're gonna watch all this chaos, all this noise come past you and you're gonna be the sacred observer. So notice that whatever is most troubling to you right now, whether it's the chaos of the unknown of what's gonna happen with finances because of the difficulties that our, or our world is going through, perhaps it's, excuse me, perhaps it's the chaos of, of the political stuff that's going on. We don't know what's, what's there. There's all those people on that other, other extreme of political understanding that you don't get. It's like they're talking a foreign language. Um, but anyway, whatever that is is creating chaos in your life, wherever that is that is distressing you to the point where you can't hear that spiritual connection, imagine this traveling group. Maybe it's a circus. Pretend it's a circus. Imagine as they're coming along, that's what that is. It has nothing to do with you. They're just on their way doing their thing. It's not about you. You don't have to stop them. You don't have to correct them. You don't have to change them. You can just let it be what it is. And as they get closer, they get louder and it gets more and more confusing. Just notice it. It's okay to have that confusion in the world. You don't have to buy into it. You don't have to be confused. You can notice that there's confusion. And as you're noticing that, allow all that noise and that chaos and maybe the like they're speaking a foreign language, you can't get it, you don't understand it. Just let it be. It's their journey. It's not your journey. You don't have to get involved in that. And you can let that trudge on past, making all the noise and kicking up all the dust they want. See them moving on beyond you. And then step back into the path. And as you step back into the path, notice the sun shining on your face. Notice the blue sky. Notice the clouds. 
all in your imagination, all in your awareness. Notice the wildflowers beside the road. Notice the fields, the farmer's fields. Notice the trees, maybe there's an orchard nearby. Maybe there's just a random oak tree out in the middle of whatever. And allow yourself to follow this pathway just a little further. And the road takes a little turn. And it takes you to a beautiful stream. And there's a lovely place to sit in the shade. It feels wonderful to sit in that dappled shade. And this little brook is just bubbling past, dancing over the little rocks. And you look down into the stream and there's a, a something here for you. Maybe it's a, a shiny rock, maybe it's a crystal. Maybe it's some other symbolic object. Reach into the water and take it out. Realize that it's been placed there just for you, to help you on your path, to help you find your way, to help you be at peace, to help you remember who you are, and to help you listen and hear the voice of spirit. So as you pick that up, notice it, and it will have symbolic meaning for you. And as you're sitting here next to this pond, the stream, perhaps you're sitting on a log, or perhaps you're sitting on a rock, perhaps you're sitting on the grass or the moss, it feels so comfortable. You would like to just lay here and rest forever. And you know, a part of you is, still has other things they want to do. But you can take this sense of this moment with you, a sense of this peace, this bliss. That carnival, that circus is still going on, and you don't have to worry about it. You don't have to let it distress you. You don't even have to hear it. And in this moment, have a sense of divine source calling your name wanting to connect with you and allow yourself to feel really willing to do that and as you feel this willingness to connect you have a sense of a presence maybe it's an angel maybe it's a guide maybe it's a spirit animal maybe it's jesus whatever comes for you is what's right for you in this moment allow yourself to receive the symbolic representation of spirit presence for you right here, right now. And as you receive that, you feel safe, you feel at home. And this spirit being also has a gift for you. Maybe it's a word or a thought, a feeling or a symbolic object. Receive that with deep gratitude. It's a symbol of your connection to spirit. That connection that is always there, whether you pay attention to it or not, the call is always there. And now it's time for us to return, but you can invite this spirit being to walk with you, or you can just know that you can come back here at any moment, in a split second, as soon as you can allow yourself to imagine it. So taking in the presence of all of this right now, the beautiful day, maybe the smell of the forest or the smell of the moss, maybe there's some wildflowers nearby, just the sense of this presence, being in the presence of divine. And allow yourself to find your way away from the little brook, find your way back to your pathway that leads you back to the country road and let that country road bring you back into the here and now, into the room that you're in presently, physically, and you feel renewed and re refreshed and revitalized. And allow yourself to feel that connection that is still here, that whatever's going on in the world, whatever that carnival, chaos, circus energy is, it's not you, and you don't have to be a part of it. If you have action to take, you'll take it. 
And if there's things that are necessary for you to do, you'll do it. And the rest you can be at peace about. And you can let it go. Because that which was lost has been found. Your innocence, your peace, your connection. You've been found. And you can hang on to that. And it's time. It's time to just walk with spirit as best you can. And knowing that spirit is always there. And if we do get distracted and sidetracked by all the chaos, spirit is just there, hand out, to get who you were there for a minute. No judgment, no criticism, just welcomes us immediately back onto the sacred path. Now you might want to take a deep breath in. <sighs> Stretch a little bit, wiggle fingers, wiggle toes. And I'm going to call Phil out, see if he'll join me for communion. And then we'll see if you have any questions about your guided meditation. Ah, he's on his way. There you are. You remember communion this time? I did. Cool. I know. I thought didn't of remember it. the microphone, but I remember. And I thought communion. about going down the hallway. Did we forget the communion again? But yeah, I would have heard about it on the way down the hallway. You probably would have. <laughs> you know, we're doing the best we can. Yeah. So communion. This little wafer is a symbol of the physical journey that Jesus took. And he opened a door for us. He opened a gateway for us. And, you know, no matter what you think about, you know, Christianity, and granted, we don't really call ourselves Christians anymore, but no matter what, Jesus was a cool dude. I mean, you know, listen to what he says, what actually he said, uh, and um, try to live a better life like he did. Connected. Walk with me. Yeah. Walk with me. So this is a symbol that helps us remember physically to walk with him. Join us in prayer. Loving spirit of love, we are grateful for this physical journey that allows us spiritual connection. Walk with us in all things. These things we pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Let me help you. Thank you. My fingers are sore from sanding this morning. Sanding? Sanding. On the bed. Before I painted final sanding. Because you're doing this for days. So can we no, like days? Refocus? Are you kidding? Weeks. I'll go for it. Yes. <sighs> At any time we can come back into focus. <laughs> Thank you for being a perfect example of my message today. Squirrel! Oh. Sorry. Join us in join us in prayer, please. Loving spirit of light, as we drink this in, help us to drink in the awareness of this present moment. Help us to drink in the connection that we have with you at any moment. Walk with us in all things. These things we pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. And about this time, we would send baskets around. And we would have someone volunteer, or I would just pick somebody to, hey, say something. And they would come up and say really nice things. They found things often. You know, yeah. I, could, I couldn't have made that stuff up most, for the most yeah. part. Yeah. It's yeah. great. People love us. Big surprise. So, um, questions about your guided meditation? Yep. You there were run? some. There were some. Want to run back and... Yep. I'll, I'll phone you, my dear, my beloved. I can see some comments there. Let's see what you have to say. What? Speak to me. Okay, hold on. Let me put my other glasses on. Uh, so while you're doing while you're doing that, Phil. So while you're, while you're looking at that for a second, I gave people the option of stepping to the right or stepping to the left off the path. Yep. So let me talk to you briefly about that because that way you don't have to address it every time. <clears throat> if you stepped off the path to the right, this is my right, not your right. Your right. 
if you stepped off to your right, this is letting you know that this is new for you, that there's a new um, distraction. This is not something that you're familiar with, so it's new territory for you. The disruption of not knowing what's happening because this is new territory. That's part of the problem or part of the issue for you. If you stepped off to the left, your left, this is letting you know that there's old stuff that's kind of mingled in with whatever's going on in your world. So old stuff has come up uh, to raise its head to look at you, for you to take, uh, take a look at. Does that make sense? Those things happen. You know, what's going on in our world can trigger old stuff that's coming to the surface to be healed because you're ready to heal it. It won't come up if you're not ready to heal it. So just pay attention and notice that uh, if you stepped off to the left, that there's old things mingled in with whatever situation is distracting you. Okay? So you'll go from there, Mr. Phil. Uh, well, I just, um, Mary had a question. Um, it says, can the infinity process be confined with all that I am returned to me now? Oh, absolutely. You can, you can work with that together. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Because again, that process, all, all that I am returned to me now, is returning you to that state of present awareness, which links the heart of hearts, which has the eternal connection and the higher awareness that we're looking for, the higher mind that we've, we are searching for, that, that expanded awareness. And the affinity symbol that we did with our hands, that is a part of that. Uh, and is a physical structure construct to assist that. So yes and yes. Very, very good process to put together. Good insight. Um, jo said she received an eye, like an Egyptian. Angel came to be with me and gave me the word joy. Ah, so this eye is about seeing, but seeing beyond the physical realm, seeing spiritually seeing the spiritual application, and perhaps even seeing spirits itself. So just notice that a new insight is coming and new sight is coming for you. Having the angelic presence means that you uh, have protection, you have comfort and, and care. And uh, the word joy is letting you know that it's okay to have your heart uplifted and it's okay to have fun. It, this may be trying times, but you can still have fun and be joyful. And they're encouraging you to do that and helping you to do that. So, hope that's helpful. Would it help you? Um, everybody's saying either they did right or left thing. I'm not actually saying that and giving the other answers. They, you know, the question is, do you want me to say it or just leave that portion out? Oh, we can just leave that out because I've given them that information and it, it doesn't really affect what gift they were given. And that's kind of the, my question. Okay, okay. Sandy said, uh, in water was a shiny, a gold, shiny old time key given a wooden treasure box. So an old time key. All right, so... Shiny. Shiny. All right. So this is, you have the key to whatever it is, whatever circumstance, whatever situation, you have the key to do that. Uh, this And being given an old treasure box, the key can open that. So this is letting you know that you have the treasures already and you have the key to access them. So everything you need to know, everything you need to be aware of is at your fingertips and you have access to that. It's been gifted to you. Hopefully that makes sense. Hey, Myrna, daisies on the path received eagle feather and a piece of turquoise. Eagle feather and a piece of turquoise. So the daisies are about uh, discernment. Loves me, loves me not. We pick the petals off a daisy. Uh, this is discernment. Discerning what love really is for you. And how love really responds for you. Uh, the eagle feather is sacredness. So you were gifted with that call to sacredness. It's here. It's right here, right now. Um, and then the turquoise is the sacred stone, the Native American sacred stone. So this is allowing you that solid connection between you and spirit. You might want to carry turquoise with you for a while if you have a piece. Anything else? Uh, yeah, Marianne uh, had an arrow in the water. 
possibly um, to help with direction and uh, given a lock of hair. Okay, so an arrow, again, yes, direction. The interesting thing with uh, an arrow is it shoots true. What are you focusing on? Whatever you focus on is what is going to be the target. And if you focus on what's negative, that's where your attention is going to go and that's where spirit is going to lead you. On what's beautiful and pleasant and joyful and brings you grace, that's where spirit's going to going to lead you. Uh, what was the other thing she received? I'm sorry. We scrolled past probably. Oh, hair. lock of hair. Lock of hair. Uh, a lock of hair is, this is your DNA is in here. Uh, often in times past, we would save a lock of hair because this was a remembrance. So this is asking you to remember who you are. Not the circumstances you've been through, but remember who you are. The essence of who you truly are. And that is what can connect in with Divine Source. I hope that blesses you. Anything else? Yeah, Scott said he found a fist-sized river rock, and Jesus gave me a walking stick. <laughs> oh, I love it. <laughs> okay, so a fist-sized rock. So this is, man, you got this. This is like having the power and the strength. Jesus himself referred to, he's the rock of ages. So to find this rock and be able to take that on, this is steadfastness. No matter what's going on in your world, you can be steadfast. And people look to that steadfastness so they can find their own strength. So allow yourself to be strong. And allow other people to find their own strength. You don't have to be their strength for them. They can observe your strength and through that find their strength. And what did Jesus give him? A walking stick. So Jesus, <laughs> Jesus is going to walk with you. You know, this whole message is about walk with me, walk with me. And this is symbolically saying, Jesus is saying, I'm walking with you, dude. We're together. I got gotcha. you. How beautiful is that? Um, I have to tell you, when you told uh, Scott about the uh, fist-sized fist rock, yeah. I, I felt and heard a sigh of relief. You felt and heard a sigh of relief. Oh, okay. So, so, so you don't have to be the rock for everybody else. But you being the rock for yourself will help them find that. And yeah, I think that would be a huge relief. Because your kind heart wants to help, wants to help people find their way. And you do. But you do by being strong for yourself. Okay, what else? Uh, Terry, turquoise river rock and two white wolves came to meet me. Wonderful. Wow, two white wolves. So, um... Turquoise river rock. The turquoise, again, turquoise is a sacred Native American stone. I understand it's becoming quite rare uh, in the natural world. This allows you that sacredness. So notice that you can carry that with you, that that you, you're, what you're doing, where you're walking is sacred, sacred ground. Every step you take is sacred ground. It doesn't matter what you're doing, whether it's fixing a meal or washing clothes or, or dusting or playing with a grandchild everything you do is sacred when your awareness is is present and this is allowing you to honor that journey that you're on and recognizing the sacredness of it the two white wolves are letting you know that you have the balance male and female balance here um, and the their spirit their spirit guidance the energy of wolf is lead follower get out of the way so if you're in a place where, you, where a leader is ne needed, you can step up. If somebody else is leading, even if you don't like that quite way they're doing it, you can step back and you can step out of the way if you need to. And let everything, let that chaos just keep moving past you. So this gives you the power of choice when you need it the most. How oh, that's beautiful. Anything else, Phil? Uh, yeah, Beth has a, a long one. I was gonna read parts of it and then I figured that I, and I better just read the whole thing. Okay, read the whole thing. I received a heart woven from willow branches in the water, and my guide gave me a heart locket. I heard that the gift was connecting my heart with my um, heart of hearts. Oh, beautiful. Yeah, the, um, so the locket, 
is made of metal, so that's strong and that's powerful. The, the heart from in the water that was woven, this is allowing you to take your life experiences which have woven themselves together to bring you here, to bring you here and to bring you now. And together with the locket, which holds uh, memories and, uh, and the sweetness of, of what was, and allows you to carry that into what will be. So how beautiful is that? That's empowering you to, yes, do connect your, you are indeed connecting your heart of hearts with your heart and you're connecting uh, with that sacred awareness, that expanded awareness. And that puts you on the path and you are walking with spirit in that regard. So Phil hung up on me, so I'm assuming that's all that he's going to do for now. There was one more, but I can't see it. So I'll just see if I could see it here. All I see is thank you, and wow, that was beautiful. <laughs> oh, and yeah, well, the Leslie one, I couldn't see it. Okay. So, so I guess that's it for us for now. Yep. So hope you De all... Delilah says goodbye. She's still Can sleeping. Can Can that not... No, they can't. I can't see her. Uh-uh. Oh, darn. She's, She's so sleeping. Cute. A sleeping dog is a good thing. Yes. Um... I think we've said all we needed to say. I woke up this morning with a song, um, Forever Young, on my heart. That's one of Phil's favorites for it is. us. It is one of my favorites, like my blessing for everybody. So if you haven't heard it recently, go listen to it. It's truly, truly a wonderful blessing. And the, the words are, may the good Lord be with you down every road you roam. May sunshine and happiness surround you when you're far from home. And right now we're on this spiritual walk. We feel far from home. Yeah. But whatever cho road you choose, he's right behind you. Win or lose. Forever young. Let's do sacred energy circle. Right. <laughs> Did I make you cry? <laughs> Frequently with that yes. song. Okay, left hand up, right hand down, and hover. If you're just doing it by yourself, just your hands together, letting the energy flow back and forth between them. You're connected now, yeah, probably in a higher... Right Whatever, I can't get it straight. <laughs> it's only been doing this for, oh, I don't know, a few decades. So, Almost 23 couple, years. Couple days, You're connected to Divine Source now in a higher level than you ever have before. Can you feel that? Bring that connection into your heart space and then send it out your left hand and back into your right hand and, and allow that energy to build. This is tangible, physical, powerful energy from a higher source that is here to bless you, here to strengthen you, here to walk with you. Maybe someone in your circle of influence that could use comfort or encouragement or strength. If you're mindful of them, they'll tap into this energy too. So just notice them for a moment, hold them in your awareness, have a sense that they are receiving this energy. This energy doesn't know time or space. It can go anywhere, anytime. And now take a deep breath in. <sighs> and exhale to release them. We don't want any psychic backwash, bringing fresh, bright energy in from that higher source. Send it out your left hand. Receive from your right. Both hands up. Collect all the energy you'd like to take with you. Bring it into your heart space. May your life be a prayer. God bless. We will see you Wednesday Wisdoms. And I made him cry. Wednesday Wisdoms will do another little process that adds to what we talked about today. Go outside in your bare feet. Play in the grass. Go out tonight. See Neo Wise Comet. Cool day. Cool day. We love you.